Good morning. morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. We are happy to have two guest people with us today. Cynthia DeVos, (laughs) who was the assistant pastor here from 2001 until 2018, and Dale Rogers from Westminster Presbyterian Church in Springfield, Illinois. The way I remember Dale's name is Dale's from Yale. (laughs) Cynthia, I have no idea how I remember your name. (laughs) So we welcome both of these to lead our service today. Thank you. I must have left a lasting impression on you so you remembered my name. (laughs) Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I welcome all of you this morning on this beautiful Sabbath morning. I hope you all are well and enjoying this very hot and humid day. I just have a couple of announcements. As many of you may have already heard, David Rockness had uh, open heart surgery this week. It was very unexpected, but he has had it. He is doing well, and hopefully he will be out of the hospital probably by Monday and be over at either Edgewater or at the, um, the fountain up by the hospital. Well, he actually is not gonna be in the fountain. He's, um, <laughs> he's actually, that's the name of the, uh, the nursing facility up there. So. I also wanna remind you all to bring in your school supplies. I think it's not too many more weeks before school starts. And I know that the teachers and schools truly appreciate everything that we are able to give to them. Uh, This week, the men's Bible study is on uh, Tuesday, and on Wednesday, the ladies will be having their Dutch treat luncheon. So anybody who is wanting to go to that, it's at the Country Club of Mount Dora, and I think I don't know who's in charge of that anymore, but I'm sure that they will be happy to have you join them. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord.
Let us go to our God in prayer. We have gathered here, Lord, on this Sabbath morning, each with our own joys, concerns, and difficulties. We ask, Lord, that just for this time of worship, just for this time together, that we may find peace from the chaos of our lives and of this world. And as your peace engulfs us, may we feel the comfort of your love embrace us, and the peace that only you are able to give rise within us. We pray now, Lord, the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Randy. I get your blood flowing. We are so blessed to be loved by the eternal God, creator of all, creator of everything in this world. Let us go to him now in prayer. God, you are the artist who paints the sunrise the choreographer who choreographs the dance of the falling leaves. You are the sculptor who sculpts the drifts of snow, the designer of the flowers, the perfumer who creates the most beautiful fragrances. You are the creator whose creation takes our breath away, whose miracles and mysteries and majesty we stand in awe of. You are the creator God, 
and to you we give all praise and glory. We have, Lord, been made in your image, but we are weak. We are flawed, prone to give in to the temptations and sin. And so we ask, Father, for your forgiveness and for the strength and the courage to stay the course and live the life that you want and expect us to live. Lord, we are a people who are weary because we are surrounded by negative energy and negative news. COVID is again on the rise. Natural disasters are everywhere. Buildings are collapsing. The poor are getting poorer. The sick can't afford health care. Unemployment is up. And the choice between rent and food has become common. There are so many who are helpless, hopeless, and hurting. We pray for your help, Lord. We ask that by some divine miracle, these problems will cease and we will feel your spirit renewing our lives again. We pray for peace, for an end to all war and conflict. We pray that minds of reasons will come together and change this world so that we are united in peace and hope and above all else, love, a love for one another and a great love for you, the great I am. We lift up now, Lord God, our prayers and concerns. Father, on the day that you breathed life into us, you also planted a tiny seed in our hearts the seed of the Spirit. Like all seeds, if it is watered and nurtured, it will flourish and grow. Lord, may your grace rain upon our hearts and cause the seed to grow and cover our minds, our body and soul with faith, hope, joy and love. And may we go out into the world and water the seeds of the Spirit in others until all of the world is planted and growing in your steadfast love. Amen. Our unison reading this morning is Psalm number 34. It is on page 481 in the Pew Bible. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no want. The young lion suffers want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. O oh, come, sons, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and covets many days that he may enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. May God add his blessings to his sacred word.
Today's sermon text comes out of the Gospel of John, chapter uh, 14, verses 1 through 4, and I am reading out of the um, NIV version of Scripture. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you always may be where I am. You know the place where I am going. Amen. All of us here are people of faith. And as people of faith, we normally try to think the best of others. And we usually trust their opinion. However, if a used car salesman said to us, trust me, this car was only driven on Sunday mornings to church by a little old lady, red flags would go up. If a politician said, trust me, red flags should go up. And if a teenager says, trust me, I will not have a party while you're away for the weekend, major red flags should go up. And the reason is that even though we are people of faith, sometimes we cannot be trusted. But what about God? What if God said, trust me? I have a plan, it's going to work, and everything's going to be okay. Would red flags go up? According to Webster's Dictionary, faith is a belief not based on logical material evidence. Belief and trust in God, a religious conviction, confident belief in the truth. Trust is a total confidence in the ability and the good character of others, one in whom confidence is placed. And doubt is to be skeptical or undecided, to be distrusted. Love is a human devotion to God and an affection for another person. Throughout the scripture, there has always been People of devout faith, those who trusted God, who never doubted God, they loved God. And then there were those who loved God but did not trust God. That is a human flaw. A human flaw that causes us at times to doubt God and the direction that it is leading our lives in. And it's not because of God, it is because too often we think that we know what is better for us in our lives than God knows what is best in our lives. We know what we want, and we want it, even if we know that it is something that God does not want for us. From God's perspective, I would think that God would feel like Perhaps he couldn't always trust his people. And all of that is on us. Because humans make promises to God that they do not keep. They do things that they know they are not supposed to do, and they try to get away with it. And at times, God may not trust his people, but he never stops loving them. He never gives up on them. And he wants only what is best for his people. Sadly, humans sometimes stop loving God. They sometimes turn away from God. They convince themselves that they are right, God is wrong. And when things go south, they blame God. Because it is easier to blame God for everything that is going wrong in their lives than to admit 
that they were wrong. We are a fragile and a frail people. And sometimes we end up in places God never wanted us to go, doing things that God never wanted us to do, but God does not forsake us. He forgives us, he embraces us with his love. But not trusting God is not a new phenomenon. Beginning in the Old Testament, God's people question some of God's decisions, doubting some of his judgment, and not trusting his plans, the plans he put in place for them. Abraham was told by God to take his son Isaac and sacrifice him. Abraham was a man of very deep, devout faith, and he did as God instructed. Well, God never intended to use Isaac as a living sacrifice. The point was that Abraham trusted God so much that he was willing to sacrifice his son. But not everyone in the scriptures was like Abraham. Abraham was by no means perfect, but he did have a deep faith and a deep trust in God. Moses was also a man of deep, deep faith. But he was quite sure that God didn't have it right when God said to him, I want you to go to Egypt. I want you to go to Pharaoh, tell him to let my people go. And Moses thought that this was the most horrible idea he'd ever heard. And he said so to God. Dude, you got the wrong guy. I can't do that. Well, God disagreed with Moses. And Moses even tried to push it off on his brother Aaron. God disagreed with that as much. But finally, Moses agreed with God. He put his trust in God. And because he put his trust in God, everything went as God had planned. We know how that story ended. And surprise, surprise, God was right, and it worked. Jonah was also a man of faith. And God told Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. Not because he necessarily didn't trust God, but because he didn't like the people of Nineveh. He tried to run away, like God wasn't going to find him. And finally, Jonah decided that God was right. God had made the right decision. But as we can see in the scripture of Jonah, he went to Nineveh. And he didn't like the idea. He didn't want to do it. But he went, putting his trust in God, and everything worked out just as God had planned. Moses and Jonah were not the only people, the only men of faith in the Old Testament that didn't trust the decisions that God was making. King Saul was notorious for not trusting in God, doing things his own way. And there were others in the Old Testament that did not trust God's decisions and they doubted him, they questioned him, which in turn led them to disobedience, which led God to becoming frustrated and at times angry for having to constantly clean up the messes that they made. Fast forward to the New Testament. Zechariah was a priest in the temple when Gabriel told him that in his old age, he and his wife Elizabeth were going to have a son and they should name him John, Zechariah disagreed with this. There was no way that God could make this happen. And he told the angel that he didn't trust God and laughed at him. Well, the angel Gabriel thought that was disrespectful 
and he just quieted Zechariah for nine months. He had no voice. Well, finally, Zechariah did have a son, just as God had said he would, and he did name him John. The disciples were hand-picked by Jesus, but there were times when the disciples doubted that Jesus knew exactly what he was doing, that he was making the right choices. Many times they didn't even understand what he was talking about. The disciples didn't like the decision Jesus made of letting Judas become one of the disciples. He was not a Galilean like all the other disciples, and they didn't trust Judas. Apparently they were spot on in their thinking, but Jesus knew that he was doing what had to be done. It was all part of a much larger plan. The night that Jesus walked on water to meet the disciples in the boat, Peter wanted to walk on water also, and he did. Up until the time that he took his focus off of Jesus and began to sink into the water. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and human doubt came into his mind and it caused him to sink. How many times have we doubted Jesus and the plan that is going on in our life at the time and then we get a sinking feeling that it was all wrong and things are not going well. And I should have listened to my Lord. The most famous doubter of all, Doubting Thomas, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, unless I put my finger in his side, I will not believe that he was resurrected and that he came to see you, the other disciples. Well, Jesus came back. And Thomas did see the nail marks in his hands. And he did put his finger in, the, in Jesus' side. Thomas not only didn't trust the disciples, he doubted that Jesus was even resurrected. And he had lost his faith. And Jesus said to Thomas, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who believe but have not seen. And that, brothers and sisters, is us. We are the believers that Jesus was speaking of, the ones that did not see the marks in his hands and the piercing of his side. As I said, there were many people in scripture who had trust issues and doubts about God's decision, God's plans for them. And at times, many of we Christians have doubts. We don't trust God. And we have issues with God because of the things that are going on in our own personal lives. It isn't wrong to seek God's counsel when things in our lives become chaotic when they become overwhelming or frightening. But how we handle these situations, how our reaction to God is, makes all of the difference in our lives and in our relationship with God. When I was a child, every Sunday morning I went to church with my family. We were all involved in the church, and I loved all of it. It was a big part of my life. But then, as many of you who know me know, my father died, and my world was turned upside down. I was still a child. My mother was an alcoholic. My father died. And I never wanted to talk to God again. 
I was so angry with God that I wasn't going to go back to church and I was never going to pray again. I felt like God had abandoned me and he didn't love me because if he did, this would not have happened in my life. I didn't trust God and I doubted that he cared very much about me. But as time went on, people came into my life people of faith who gave me support, who encouraged me, who gave me insight, and above all else, who gave me the love that I so desperately needed. And it took a bit of time, but I finally realized that God had put these people into my life. He was working through these people to express his love for me. That led me back to the church. That led me back to Jesus Christ. God did have a plan for me. Not only did he have a plan for me, but he called me to minister to his people. And I praise Jesus Christ that he knew what he was doing because here I am today. Even though we are all people of faith, every one of us at some point in our lives has faced situations and circumstances that have brought us to question God and our lives, God and our relationship with him. Events that may have made us become angry toward God, lose trust in God, feel betrayed by God, a feeling that maybe God didn't really love us as much after all? What could cause such sadness and such sorrowful emotions? So, so many things. Having to face each day in a world that is spiraling out of control, with no positive revolu resolution in sight, Scars from our childhood that have never really healed. A life in crises. Fires are raging in the West. People are dying and losing everything that they own and are asking God, why is this happening? Where are you, God? Why are you letting this happen to us? For well over a year, thousands and thousands of people have died from the coronavirus. And surely people have asked, COVID, not Corona. <laughs> Maybe they drank some Corona while they were, <laughs> but it's <laughs> from the COVID virus. And surely people asked again, what is happening, God? Why are you letting this happen? Our loved ones are dying all alone. Why, God, are you allowing this? So many of us have sat at this bedside of a loved one who is dying. So many of us have lost loved ones, lost children to drugs, to alcohol, to car accidents. So many of us have asked that same question. Where are you, God? Why can't you help me? How can I be a faithful Christian how can I trust you? How can I love you? You see my misery, but you will not help me. There are so, so many problems and so many broken hearts. Losing a job, getting a divorce, illness, abuse, betrayal, the list goes on and on. It is a human reaction to doubt God, it is a human reaction to, at times, not trust God. At times, to feel sorrow and abandon. And it is also a human reaction to distance ourselves from the pain or the one we think is causing the pain. And in many cases, God gets the blame. When you read the book of Job, you can not only see Job's reaction 
to the strife in his life. But you can see God's reaction to Job. Many people over time are able to overcome these emotions, these feelings of anger. But sadly, for those who are unable to overcome them, they carry those emotions, they carry that bitterness and that negative energy with them throughout their lives. And for the rest of their lives, they live with the negative energy, bringing them down, constantly breaking their hearts, constantly being in a state of anger. Jesus never once said that our lives would be like a walk through a dewy meadow. In fact, he said, for Christians, life is going to be very difficult. Jesus also said, let not your hearts be troubled, either let them be afraid. Trust in God, trust also in me. My father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you that I go and prepare a place for you and I will come back for you so that where I am, you shall be also. You know the place where I am going. After Jesus said these words, good old doubting Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how are we supposed to know how to get there? Certainly Jesus at this point shook his head and thought, what is wrong with this guy? Sometimes Jesus shakes his head and says the same thing to us. These words of Jesus, if I go and prepare a place for you and I will come back to you so that where I am you shall be also. This is the pinnacle of our faith. This is the purpose of our faith journey, to trust in God, to trust in Jesus Christ, and to live in the Spirit and to be with Jesus Christ through all eternity. Will we face difficulties in life? Absolutely. Reading the scriptures, we can see that during the Old Testament times, during the New Testament times, God's people suffered and struggled through disease, through war, through poverty, through sickness. But God never gave up on them. And most of them never gave up on God. They were faithful, God-loving people. But just like us at times, they did have trust issues. They had doubts. They had questions. That's just a normal part of being in a relationship. The bottom line of it all is this. God created the heavens and the earth and all that dwells therein. God gave to the world his only begotten son, who obediently took the sins of mankind upon himself and died for our sins and our salvation. He has told us that he will come for us so that where we are, where he is, we will be also. Now, if that is not unconditional love, then I don't know what unconditional love is. Every, one, every day, God gives to his children his blessings, his gifts and his miracles. Often we are too busy to even notice or to trouble ourselves to look for them. 
Sometimes the burdens that we are carrying, the troubles that we have, are overwhelming. And we don't even pay attention to what God is telling us to do. God never stops trying to help us. His compassion for us, his forgiveness for us, rains down upon us like a spring shower. And we need those showers to refresh us and to renew us so that we can move forward, so that we can continue our walk of faith with Jesus. A walk that will take us closer and closer to Jesus until we reach the place that he has prepared for us in the eternal kingdom where he will be also. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust in Jesus also. Because no matter how difficult things become in our lives, if we sit quietly and we wait, we will hear the whisper of God directing us, guiding us, calming us, and bringing an inner peace to us. Remember Elijah when he was in the cave he didn't find God in the wind. He didn't find God in the fire. He didn't find God in the storm. He found God in a whisper, in a voice that whispered. Listen for the voice of your Father. Amen.
Sometimes life can be so difficult. But that is not what Jesus wants us to dwell on. He wants us to feel the joy and he wants us to enjoy the journey. So when you have troubles, just call on your Lord, let him carry the burden and just walk close by and he will always be with you. And go now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.